last, the very last, so richly, brightly, dazzling yellow, perhaps if the sun's tears would sing against a white stone. Such, such a yellow is carried lightly way up high. It went away, I'm sure, because it's wished to kiss the world goodbye. These young faces, their parents would call them children's faces, belong to the 10th graders in Kimberly Tuttle's North Mecklenburg High School English class. The subject at hand is the deaths of well over a million children in the Holocaust. That butterfly was the last one. Butterflies don't live here in the ghetto. This poem was written by a young man who then perished in the Holocaust. His name was Pavel Friedman. That is a pretty heavy way to begin your day. But before this class is over, these volunteer visitors from the Levine Jewish Community Center's Butterfly Project hope to enlist these young minds through the imagery of the butterfly, free and unfettered, in a cause of remembrance and hope. The title of this whole program is Zikaron, the Tikva. Zikaron is remembrance and Tikva means hope. So the title of this is, is Remembrance and Hope, as we remember the past and hopeful for a more peaceful future because we know there are still so many children suffering all over the world. So you can keep that in mind when you're painting. The butterflies they're painting didn't fly in through the classroom window. They are formed here at the Levine Jewish Community Center's ceramic studio, where the students' painted butterflies will be glazed and fired, butterflies now numbering in the thousands and counting. This exciting project began in San Diego at the Jewish Academy, and the idea was to memorialize and honor the 1.5 million children that were killed in the Holocaust. And here in Charlotte at the Levine Jewish Community Center, we pledged to make 2,000 butterflies, and we would be a part of this large worldwide project. And in the spring of 2010, having conducted dozens of workshops throughout the greater Charlotte region, they reached that goal, and then they decided they'll keep going. And each butterfly, in memory of a specific child who perished, will have a memorial home a place to congregate in a part of Shalom Park to be called Butterfly Garden because the idea hit home with leaders like Bill Gorelick. This is an outstanding project. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of things, but this one just simply, it feels good, it sounds good, and it rings a bell. We found a site that I think is outstanding, the site that we're standing in now. We got a great artist come up with the sculpture. His name is Paul Russo, who's a local Jewish guy who's a member of the J. While this is his first Holocaust project, Paul Russo is all too familiar with the subject. My father's entire family, which they came from Rhodes, uh, an island between off Turkey, near Greece, um, a Mediterranean island, all the Jews on that island were wiped out, all of them. The same can be said of Butterfly Project supporter and contributor Larry Schwartz. Well, I'm a child of uh, parents who are survivors. Um, my parents were, um, my mom was in Auschwitz, my father was in Dachau, and no one in their family uh, survived, not their parents, not their brothers, sisters, um, and they were it on both sides of the family. All of the children's butterflies that have been created will be affixed to that sculpture like mosaic. And um, future butterflies that are created will also go on there. It will be a living, growing memorial. The thing that's exciting about the Butterfly Project is that it's an opportunity for the whole community to get together and bring a humanitarian project not only to the Shalom Park, but to the whole community of Charlotte. When the offer came, teacher Kimberly Tuttle jumped at the chance to have the Butterfly Project back for a second year at her school. By using her materials on the Holocaust in the school hallway, painful pictures and words. It was an opportunity that I couldn't, I couldn't say no to and I, I definitely saw what my, the joy that it brought to my students when they were able to say, I'm creating this butterfly in remembrance of a child who did not have the opportunity to live. I'm living for him or I'm living for her I had to bring that back again. So I hear students say, I never thought of it this in this way. Because while all of this is such indelible history for many of us, the horrors of the Holocaust may well be news to a 10th grader. It's like learning something new, learning something that happened, 
that in the, in the past that's really serious. Well, there's something new that you've learned. Yes. Did it surprise you, the, the size of it, the magnet? Oh, yes, because I didn't really think, like at first, I didn't really think that it was that, like, like, like that many people died. These certificates that we're going to give to you today represent the child that perished in the Holocaust. And it has your name on it. And it says you have made a butterfly in memory of and the name of the child. And if you will, read the name of the child that you painted a butterfly for. Laura Bueller. Thomas Lounger. Martin Lehman. Suzanne Bickert. It seems like more of a connection instead of just painting a butterfly. It seems like you're doing it for someone. Um, someone that had to go through this and someone that died because of it. It has more of a sentimental connection to it. But perhaps you're thinking there are a bunch of high school kids thinking 24-7 about Friday night's football game and what tests they've got coming up and who they'll text next. Posing the question, is there room in those busy lives to care? There's room inside of everybody, you know, there's just this one little part of everybody, no matter how big or small, even if they haven't gone through it, that can relate and just think about, because everybody's a person, you have to just think about what it would mean if your family, if you were in that kind of situation, you just have to think about it, and it really puts things in perspective, it makes you think that football game is not so important, this test is not such a big deal when that kind of stuff's happening in the world, has happened, it's still happening today, genocide, you know, in Darfur and other places around the world today. So we haven't fixed it yet, but I guess we're working on it. Or to sum up young Grayson Godwin's oh-so-insightful words in two Hebrew words, zikaron fatikva. Remembrance and hope. And that's what this project really does. Um, it tends to take the lessons of the Holocaust and transform them into action for the future. We try and create an educational content that gets people thinking about how should I act in the future. Leon Anders. Hannah Loinger. Leo Lerner. Manfred Anders. And that's what inspires us to keep, keep going with the project. Today, the dedication of the Margaret and Lou Schwartz Butterfly Garden and its magnificent memorial sculpture by Paul Russo. Release your butterfly, please. <laughs> Remembrance and hope. In this case, the remembrance of a searing 20th century lesson in a very 21st century way. While the sculpture is the focal point of the butterfly garden, the focus of the butterfly project continues to be the educational workshops. In addition to visiting other locations, you will now have that same workshop experience and more at the Levine Jewish Community Center's Butterfly Garden. Keep the project soaring by scheduling a workshop for your group or become a contributor or project volunteer. Go to our website at www.charlottejcc.org and click on the Butterfly Project tab or call 704-366-5007.